Mr. Chair. Uh, call uh, John O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, actually, when I was looking at this uh, uh, this bill, the Films, Videos and Publications Classification Interim Restriction Order Classification Amendment Bill. Um, I looked at that and I, I had I stopped to stop and think about how many uh, bills that go through this parliament that have long titles that actually at times just uh, almost more of a mouthful and would there be a way that we could simplify the title of this bill uh, to make it easier for a people to get their, their mouths around and I know we, we managed to sort of reduce it down by one word through the select committee stage uh, but actually I was, I was thinking through, thinking what would some of the alternative titles to this bill uh, possibly be. Um, for example, I know based on some of the, the way that people consider classifications, they might have wanted to call, call it the keeping dodgy stuff away from teenagers bill, um, uh, or uh, particularly from other submitters, they might have wanted to call it something like the protecting families from being exposed to offensive material bill. Uh, I realised then, of course, that those uh, those names for those bills wouldn't necessarily be a whole lot shorter either. <clears throat> uh, and of course, coming from the other spectrum, uh, as has been alluded to today, because this, uh, in doing this, it does sort of uh, restrict people's ability for freedom of speech. It might have also potentially been called the inhibiting freedom of speech uh, bill. But Mr Speaker, when I look at those different options and those different alternatives that are out there, probably on balance, um, the name and the title of this bill is in fact about the right one because it is in fact obviously amending a parent act um, which talks about films, videos and publications. I guess my concern though is actually uh, in a, the modern day now where we're talking about um, the terminology films or videos for example. Um, I know last time I spoke on this bill I referred to a uh, a recording, and Mr. Farfoy suggested that perhaps it might have been done so long ago it would have been done on cassette. Um, but uh, uh, but what, what we did have uh, <laughs> is that actually the term video, for example, uh, is a very broad term, and I wonder whether or not we actually need to, uh, to uh, you know, really revise sometimes our language, make sure it's a bit future-proofed. Uh, I know Mr. Mallard, Mallard still would like to play his uh, LPs on his gramophone. Um, it would appear from the description he was giving. Oh, of course, they wouldn't have even been LPs. The old 78s on a gramophone. Uh, of course, if, you, if you're doing a 78, you have to wind it a little bit faster, of course, and it's a bit more tiring. Uh, finally, uh, Mr Chair, I just do want to touch on the commencement. Sometimes it is appropriate to have a lead-in time between Royal Assent uh, and when the bill comes into play. Given that the, the use of this uh, legislation is usually reasonably rare, it doesn't happen uh, very often, uh, given the uh, expertise of the people who are involved in classifications, um, it seems very appropriate to me, Mr Chair, that actually they've had quite a lot of lead-in time. Uh, they've seen the support that this bill has got from across the House and, and we'll be able to even see with a level of surety now that this is the way things are heading so they can start to gear up for it. So it seems entirely appropriate to me that uh, having a commencement date for the day after the Royal, Royal Ascent um, is, uh, is entirely appropriate. And I do want to thank uh, uh, the member Maureen Pugh for our constitutional lesson that we had about Royal Ascent uh, a couple of speeches ago. Uh, Mr Chair, I think ultimately, uh, as I said, I think we've settled on the right title for this bill. It does uh, adequately describe what's contained in it. I commend Chris uh, Bishop for bringing this, championing this bill through the House and look forward to the third reading stage. Members, the question is, are clauses one to three stand part? Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I will report this bill without amendment present. <laughs> members, members, we now come to the private international law, choice of law and tort bill. And the question... We just need someone here in the chair. Yep, I'm and the question is that part one stand part. This is debate on clauses three to four.